Here's Freeman and Fox on the Sports Brothers Radio Network. Can we back it up? With Gigi Fontaine, Freeman and Fox here. On 880 The Biz, every Saturday from 3 to 5, you can catch us right here. I know a lot of folks are tuning in, and I don't know what they were had on previously, but they're probably maybe looking for that show, and it's not going to be back anytime soon. Just want to let you know. That. <laughs> Larry Million, what's up? All decked out in the you orange. Come on in here and say a little something real quick, man. I mean, I know you were on earlier. Larry Million, Dos Amigos, each and every Saturday from 10 to 12. Say hello. What's up, man? What's going on, guys? Everything good? Were you at uh, the uh, last day rod game? I thought I'd see you out there. No, I didn't he make it out there. <laughs> <laughs> crazy. Yeah. You are? I like it. You, you like him? He's a Miami guy. Oh. You know? Hard to not like him. But you don't like him? Okay. I don't like what the Yankees did to him, but... That, that, yeah, that was good. That was a little raw. Just cut him. Don't you go see, Girardi kind of teared up a little bit in the uh, press conference. You know what those Hollywood. are called, right? Huh? You know what those are called, right? <laughs> <laughs> Emmy tears, Hollywood. Emmy tears, yeah. Hollywood tears, Hollywood. crocodile oh, okay. tears. It's got all kinds of names. Yeah, the Oscar goes too. <laughs> Hello, Gigi. How are you? Hi. Never got to meet you before. I've only heard your voice so many times on another station we all work. She in. fine, ain't she? She's very good. <laughs> I'm not supposed to say that as a GM, but she's easy on the eyes. Yes, she's very easy on the eyes. That's not that sexual way. harassment, by the way. It's not. I don't feel harassed at all. No, I'm not a very harassing kind of person. I think I'm very, very sedate. Hey, great hearing you guys on the network. Yes. Uh, I'm having a good time. Last week was one of those funny weeks. It happened to be yeah. my vacation. Yeah. So I told you I'd be here today. I wanted to see what was going on. This is good stuff, man. I'm just going to go back into the, the control room. I'm here to help you any way I can, but this is good stuff. And by the way, what they did to A Rod was raw. Just think about it. Think about it. Think. Raw. We're going to get into that. We're, we're going to get into that. The Raiders aren't going to the Super Bowl, by the way. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I have to tell him that every year. Okay. Every year. Back to Earth. You guys will see. But he seems to really I'm believe I'm very confident year. Of course, year. so. He's going to be, like, hurt this year. It's yeah. going to be tough for you. Well, <laughs> but it's just a, a repeat of last year, you know. He's, <laughs> he's insane. My Raiders actually have a team this year. No. Um, if you listen to the so-called prognosticators. I don't. <laughs> you do. <laughs> I don't. We're one of the five teams, or five or six teams projected to uh, come out of the AFC. It's the NFL. They're wrong every year. Yeah. Where's the, where's the Super Bowl this year? Is this California? Is 50? Or the Super Bowl? <laughs> is it? I don't even know. Nobody knows. Okay, we're <laughs> <laughs> Is it right um, here? I was in Miami. <laughs> no, it's uh, not, not yet. Have you seen that stadium? It's not done yet. <laughs> <laughs> Will it be done by January? I got a little friendly bet with uh, with Rock. With Rock Anderson. Uh, he seems to feel that the Dolphins will be the first team to play in that stadium this year. Uh, but the Canes have, I believe, Two games, one or two games. Suppose uh, two games that are scheduled before the Dolphins' first game. And mm-hmm. He feels that that they're going to be playing up the road, or I don't know, in Trash Powers. <laughs> so we'll see. And it's a little, you know, friendly raising. You know, no, no, no money involved. Just a little drink, drink, maybe a little dinner or something. Drink or two. You know, so um, we see this every year. I want to talk about the Olympics and what's going on with Gabby Douglas and Simone. Both of the Simones. Um, it seems that I think this is the first, probably the second Olympics where social media is is a big, big deal. Mm-hmm. You could say it was a 2012. Yeah, uh, we really got a we really got a good taste of using social media, Twitter, and maybe not so much Facebook, a little bit of Facebook too. But this year, obviously, because we're in a social media society, it's in full force and it's going hard. Um, and it seems that every year that every time that the Olympics comes around, you always get the stories about race and religion and the backstories of, of people, how far they've come, what they've done to uh, to get to where they are in the Olympics. And it just seems, again, it's, it's reared its ugly head, uh, most notably where a newspaper, uh, Simone Manuel, who, who had the historic swim for, uh, for Team USA, the first mm-hmm. African American to win gold, mm-hmm. first African American female or first African American period to win gold. Um, in, in her event. The San Jose Mercury News, I know you guys didn't hear about this, you'll be, you'll be surprised to hear this. 
Um, they caught some heat for the offensive coverage of, of her historic gold medal. Uh, they put on their headline up on Twitter, Olympics, Michael Phelps shares historic night with African American. Not with Simone, not with Miss, uh, what's her last name? Uh, they really uh, did that? Wow. Michael uh -huh. Phelps shares historic, historic night with African American. Where is this publication? Uh, Mercury in San Jose, San Jose, California. <laughs> and they <laughs> caught hell, of course, on Twitter. Um, even one of their employees, this guy by the name of Tim Kawakami, says, this is a terrible headline. It's my paper. I might get in trouble for saying it, but it's a terrible headline. And it just goes on and on and on. How is it his paper and he might get in trouble, but it printed, so he doesn't have any power to stop something? Is his paper means he works for it. He works for it. Oh, okay. Yeah, he's a writer for 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 that for that paper, and you know it's kind of like a ESPN putting it out there, and uh, you know my uh, what's name Stephen A. Smith going out saying that's wrong. Yeah, okay. So yeah, it was his paper. He worked for the paper, but yeah, Michael Phelps shares historic night with African -American. African American. Now I don't know if they forgot the part where maybe it's supposed to say with African American milestone or African American who made history, African but she has a name. Even it should have. Yeah, I mean, Michael Phelps, his name is there. Why? Did, I it mean, it's felt, just African. It there's there's less words in Simone Manuel than there are in African American. Exactly. So it wasn't a character issue. Yeah, but the trend on, I mean, I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to get donated at all. I, I think it's disgusting, but all everybody was talking about that night was there was a black girl that won a gold medal in swimming, first time ever. Mm -hmm. An African American woman mm -hmm. won a gold medal. And even she wants to be known as just Simone Manuel, right. right? But that day hasn't come yet. She's the first woman, first African-American woman to win a gold. That's significant. It is significant, but don't say it in a way, because the way it registers to me is the GOAT won, you know, his medal or on his night, he also won it with an African-American, as though her win mm -hmm. taints his win. Somebody and, tweeted that. Unfortunate, I don't like that. Unfortunate that the story portrays Manuel as someone who forced Phelps to share the spotlight. Exactly. In, in, in quotation in marks. Um, that was just uh, one of them. Obviously, everybody I think knows now about Gabby Douglas and her not having her hand um, over her heart when the U.S. team was on the stand uh, receiving their medal and they're playing the they're playing the Star Spangled Banner, and of course Twitter went crazy on that. But you had people people. And the thing about Twitter and, and the social media world is like, you'll have people that'll that'll attack that, and then you'll have a, another set of people who will attack what you're attacking. Like for example, they, they tweeted out several pictures of uh, who's it? Donald Trump at a at an old uh, what's, what's, what's the, the debate or earlier this year, where everybody standing had their hand over their heart, and Donald Trump didn't. And they're like, okay, well, Gabby Douglas is so bad. Well, what about this? You yeah, know. That's true. Uh, so you had that going back and forth in, in the Twitter sphere, and I don't know if this is just because of you know I don't know what your ratio of black to white friends are on Twitter or on your Facebook, but the the, the discussion about the hair, <laughs> uh, where, where's that coming from? The, okay. there's, it's, it, it happened back in 2012 with Gabby, um, and it happened again with Gabby and uh, Simone uh, Biles, the the other gymnast. People commenting about their hair. What's up with that? Well, you know, since I'm a sister, I'll speak. And as an island girl, I'll speak on both ways that, that I see it, mm -hmm. okay? Gabby, you're like a hero for us. You know, what you did back in 2012 has never been done before. At that time, you were the first, you know, black woman to do so. I just feel like in the black household, especially the island household, you know, um, the Latin households can agree. You don't go out the house as a woman looking any type of way. You go out the house somewhat together, you know. When you go out the house not representing yourself the way that you should, it's not something that looks good. Mm -hmm. So in Gabby's, you know, defense, obviously she doesn't care about her hair. She's here to compete. But in the same breath, um, it's like... Girl, do something with your head. You know you're about to be on TV. You're representing not only this country, but your skin tone. Look decent while winning. We know you want to win, but right. can you at least run a comb through so, that? So is this... <laughs> a, so Wait a minute. 
that is how. But where is it? Is it is it when they're on the stand, or is it while she's on the uneven bars, making sure that she doesn't fall flat on her well, face? Well, because it's not like she's gonna go comb her hair real quick as she accepts her medal. So she's gonna be looking basically like that up until later on that night when she straightens it back out. And when she does do her hair, obviously she looks awesome. She's a gorgeous girl. Mm -hmm. But in that moment, competing, you know, women, my sisters kind of feel like, darn it, Gabby, you know, obviously she lives with, you know, the Caucasian family. That's how the whole story started. You know, they put her in the gym. Her mom believed in that family enough to allow them to raise her child. And in their defense, they don't know anything about black hair. They're not going to perm Gabby's hair and make sure her hair is looking decent for the competition. So it's a matter of how you're raised. My mother, I mean, okay, right now, guys, I'm wearing a hat. If I take the hat off, my hair is still late. That's, I'm not going out in public looking crazy. But that's me. I'm on the radio. I'm not on the uneven bars sweating and acting a fool. So, just yeah. it's, it's, it's different. I, I, I'm looking at her hair now. I'm going to tweet out a picture of it. You know, with it's her. hot mess. Um, I mean, I've seen Pam Oliver have bad hair days on the sidelines. Yeah, they've talked about her too. And NFL talked games. About her too. And she got the business. But I just think it's a whole lot of fussing about nothing. Out there with her hair looking uh, a football <laughs> crazed society. <laughs> you just have to look back to Monday night after the Hall of Fame induction. Was that Monday or Sunday? Monday, right? When they when they were supposed to when they were supposed to have the game. The game was supposed to be uh, Sunday, Sunday night. night. Yeah, Sunday. Sunday. Yeah. So the uh, the uh, yeah the the induction ceremony was uh, was Saturday. It was the Brett Favre and Tony Dungy and, uh, and all those guys. The induction ceremony there that was that was all fine. And everybody's you know all hyped up and ready to see just a little bit of hit, just a little bit of something on Sunday afternoon. And then the news breaks, there will not be a game. Now, I'll be honest, I wasn't anywhere near TV getting ready to watch the game, by no means. But, you know, I would have probably just tuned in, of course, later on, Sports Center caught a highlight or two or whatever, Green Bay, Indianapolis. And then I see on Twitter, or I hear, I think I saw it on the phone or something, whatever, whatever I saw it, the game was canceled, postponed due to, what was it, uh, paint? Bad paint on the field? Something on the field. Yeah. It rained. Something caused it to be bad. Yeah. Like, I don't know. The paint. That's what it was. It was paint. And so then, you know, scared of paint? officials on both sides. Well, it was a safety issue, I believe. Safety as in you're going to be slipping in the paint. You're yeah. scared. Yeah. Yeah. You don't want to buy your hurt. Yeah. You slip in the paint. Yeah. Next thing you know, you tear your ACL. Okay. You know. Okay. You know, preseason games are under the microscope as it is because they feel, football players feel they don't need them. And, the, bit, the NFL just wants them to make more money, et cetera, et cetera. Right. Nobody wants to get hurt in the Hall of Fame game. The last time I saw a guy almost get taken out in the Hall of Fame game was with Sean Taylor, the late Sean Taylor, from the University of Miami playing for the Redskins, almost killed somebody with with that legendary hit in the Hall of Fame was game. Was the Hall of Fame game? Was it was his fault. Was Not, it was in the Hall of Fame game too that he let he let he let somebody have it in that game, and he scored an interception for a touchdown. I don't believe Judge Fox hit us up on Twitter at the Sports Bros. <laughs> I think it was the Pro Bowl. He thinks it was the Hall of Fame game, or it could have been both. Nah, he had a big game that game. I remember it was his first game ever, and he lit somebody up, and he also I scored a touchdown. Man, I think you are horribly mixing two things up. A great oh, first you game know what? ever. In the Hall of Fame In the game. Hall of Fame game. That's how, yeah. Jeff, you will remember Sean Taylor or anybody having a great Hall of Fame Sean first game of the look season it up. game? Look, Hall of Fame game. First game ever. Preseason game. That doesn't sound, that doesn't that's sound natural. That's, that's just Who how. Who would remember that? Who would go out and have a great Hall of Fame game? Jeff Fox would remember that. And then it, the then great sports mind that all, I am. Out of all people, you say it's Sean Taylor? Sean Taylor. That don't even sound. Like Sean Taylor is. scored an interception return for a touchdown. Was yeah, he, he scored a touchdown Somebody in the first game. Listen. And the Hall of Fame game was in Hawaii, right? No. No. <laughs> I tried to catch you. He was trying to catch you. But yeah, it was. It was sunny and it was bright. Yeah, that's the call of the Pro Bowl. Don't you remember him lighting up that kicker in the Pro Bowl? I remember that. Okay. It was a kicker. Yeah, it was a kicker. The kicker uh, was yeah, yeah. It was it was the kicker. The kicker was trying to tackle somebody who you know the the punt returner and was this kicker? Does that make sense? Now you got me all mixed up. Anyway. Yeah, I was going to say, you guys stopped making sense like three minutes ago. So Commercial just... break? <laughs> it's okay. But it is what it is. But anyway, yeah, so that game gets canceled, right? So obviously down here in South Florida, we're all looking forward to the uh, the Dolphins and kicking off their season. Uh, I'm at Signature Cigar Lounge last night, and there's it's not packed. But there are some diehards. I mean, like sitting in that little center area where the, you know, the couches are. <laughs> Some diehards just ready because the game, that game was delayed because of what? Dolphins and Giants last night. 
but there's some diehards there sitting in the, in the center there and getting ready for the game. And um, I don't know, I think it was the, the kickoff, and you, you hear them say, well, oh, here we go, oh, here we go. I'm like, turn I look back, I'm like, guys, it's, it's, it's a preseason game. Let them turn up. It's They've a been to try. It's football, man. This is what I, I don't get with this dude. I understand. Well, no. it's football. It's football, yeah. But some, some, on some areas we get so serious and hyped up about it, and other areas we're like, ah, it was just the first game. Um, but I'm my point is, I, my point is, I'm trying to make just, just because I didn't think it was all that important. My point is, I'm trying to make us people who are serious and ready for football yeah. because they're sitting there watching that Dolphin game last night, which I lost interest right around the start of the second quarter. Uh, because the first team offense was stinking it up. We'll talk about how bad they were. But right around the first, uh, the beginning of the second quarter, I was like, right, I've, I've had enough because it was they were bad. They were playing bad, and uh, it's preseason football. But it's back, and the Dolphins got uh, Dolphins and Dolphin fans, of course, got their first taste uh, of uh, what the Dolphins hopefully won't look like too much uh, worse than they did last night. <laughs> uh, beating the Giants, by the way, twenty-seven to ten. Yeah, they did win, but it was wasn't a great. Uh, wasn't a great win, if you ask me. Y'all yeah, some complaining ass Dolphins. That's all I can say. I mean, the first preseason so, game. Okay, so what? So I was what, waiting and, I, for I, and, I just, and I just said, there's some people who uh, get hyped up about this, overhyped, and and not hyped. Really? So what am I supposed to come in here and talk about uh, the Dolphins' uh, pre first preseason game? Hey, so W, you, man, just be happy. It doesn't matter. Be happy that football is back. Half of those people that were playing in that W aren't going to be on the team in three weeks. <laughs> True, but it's if, if the fans could see, if you're not on Road to Fame TV, please download the app and listen now. I literally just be quiet. And as soon as Ed was done, I just turned my head and looked at Jeff. I was waiting for this moment. Because it's, Go ahead. it's football. <laughs> like last night, my reign is won 31 to 10. And you having a parade, aren't you? I'm not having a parade, but I know we're going to the Super Bowl this year. Oh, Lord. Okay, yeah. Mark my word. Yeah, everybody does. Yeah, we are too. And you're supposed to do that, even if you're a Detroit Lions fan with Matthew Stafford and Anquan Bolden, who played last night. And who else did they get? Marvin Jones. Uh, Wait, Anquan Bolden played where? He plays for the Detroit Lions. Calvin Johnson, oh Megatron, has retired. He went to the Lions? Yes. Oh, my goodness. See, I don't start keeping up with yeah. Team Jake. Anything you want to know, just ask me. I know. By the way, I will. I will. You are right. Our, our esteemed uh, general manager and program director, Larry Million, text. Uh, Taylor did blow up the 2004 Hall of Fame game, as well as the All Star game, right? The Pro. Thank you. As well we're as the both Pro. Right. So yeah, we're both right. Yeah, we're both right. I don't remember that. <laughs> 2000. Why do you guys remember that? <laughs> 2000. I'm so happy that we're on TV and I can first smile for the camera. Game <laughs> of the season. You guys remember that? Because I am a sports fan, like our program director Larry Million. The Amigo. Yeah. He's a sports fan. That is. Okay. We don't forget stuff like that. All right. We don't. All right. Well, I guess, you know, it is Sean Taylor. It is the U and all of that. But it's I, the I, U. I can't even tell you who they played. <laughs> but you, let, me ask, let me ask you another question. Who they played? Who they played? In the Hall of Fame game? Yeah, I don't remember. I just remember what Sean Taylor did because he's a hurricane. Okay. Okay. That's cool. That. I mean, yeah, I Because if you remember that, I'm like, okay. I do remember what he did in that All Star game too, because that, that was ridiculous. They're like, dude, we're out here on vacation. What are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> you, you blowing up people. We're in, we're in Hawaii, man. You're trying to go to the beach tomorrow. What are you That's doing? Kind of a true competitor. Yeah. I wish the NBA still had. All right, Pete, man. Love you, Sean Taylor. Speaking of the RIP, Gigi, were you uh, looking closely at the NBA schedule that was uh, released a couple of days ago? I took a little peek. Yeah, I don't like that we're not playing on Christmas. It's weird. How about that? <laughs> Uh, yeah, that's the first time since I believe 2008 that the Miami Heat will not be front and sa front stage and center on uh, TV for Christmas Day. Um, we'll talk about the schedule. That's that uh, that Alienware. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like an alien. <laughs> alienware phone yeah, home. It says Alienware for real. That's crazy. Uh, the first time for uh, as like I said since 2008 that the Miami Heat will not be playing on Christmas Day. We'll look at the schedule. And talk about some uh, some news and notes on the schedule as well, and a lot less national TV games for them yeah. as well. Only five. Oh, they don't want to watch us, huh? No, it's okay. But you know, I was wondering, the, the NBA doesn't have like what the NFL does—a flex schedule for TV, do they? I mean, like if this team got hot, all and of I a know, sudden, all of a sudden, you know, they want them like 
15, 16 game winning streak, and you know they they had they may have maybe I don't know Nets Kings on a, on a Thursday night. He's like, no, we need to switch them out with the Heat and get them. On. I wonder if they do that. I, I, I never I never heard of it, but it'd be interesting if they did do that. I don't know. They probably maybe put it on NBA TV as opposed to you know TNT or ESPN maybe. But I'm that is they true. Have, I believe that is true. I think they do that. I don't that's know about call. the other channels. Yeah, that's good. I, I believe they, they they do do that. And uh, Dwayne Wade, um, I was going to say Wade. I set that up wrong. Wade is back in the news, but it's not the Dwayne Wade. It's the other Wade. We'll talk about how his wife uh, says, hey, did you get a little bit more money? Hey, <laughs> I need to get a little bit more money. You go, um, girl. Uh, as, as well. Uh, you can hit us up on the phone lines at 305-541-2350 to get in with Freeman Fox and Gigi Fontaine here on 305 Sports Talk Network on 880 The Biz. Um, a lot of Olympic stuff going on. Um, in particular, obviously, who's blowing it up this week is Michael Phelps. I mean, dude is just a cyborg. He's, yeah, <laughs> he, you know, it, it, it's, it's funny. Even when he, when he gets a, a silver medal, what do you feel like? You feel like, damn dog. Like awesome. what happened? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what what did they do? How did you you know, were you not on your game for that like yeah. one lap or something? I'm like, test them. Make sure. <laughs> Isn't he like swimming old? He's like like Technically he's, yeah, he's like he past his prime, but you supposed know, he's to go. So Well if he's physically past his prime, competing against some people who are probably physically in, in their, their prime, prime, that that's that's stupid. That's MP, man. Just like you have MJ, that's now MP. That's the GOAT. He's Q Kanye, Walking Living Legend. What's that song? That part? Mm -hmm. That's a swimming or walking or swimming living legend. You can't you can't fight him. You just let him do his thing. I know there was a big meme thing on social media this week about him uh, smoking. And <laughs> look, if the smoking is helping him get these gold medals, smoking let that like, man relax. Yeah. You mean know, the sticky smoking head. down there? And, yeah, uh, smoking some things. I don't know if he's smoking down there because he looks really focused. Mm -hmm. But you know, you that's know, probably why he's focused. In the four years leading up to it, there were a couple times he was caught smoking, mm -hmm. and people were outraged about it. Yeah, that was. You know, yeah, yeah. But who cares? This he's country. Winning. This country is slowly moving towards a marijuana is okay. It's okay. Weed is a lure. If it's not there already, I mean, there are obviously we it is of the earth. Being it. from the islands myself. In fact. Uh, Fish and Grits and his crew, the all in house. Thanks to those guys. Some of the Dolphin fans, E Dub. And um, <laughs> let me let me set you to see. Let me set you look. We are a football crazed society. You just have to look back to Monday night after the Hall of Fame induction. Was that Monday or Sunday? Monday, right? When they when they were supposed to when they were supposed to have the game. The game was supposed to be uh, Sunday, Sunday night. night. Yeah, Sunday. Sunday. Yeah. So the, uh, the uh, yeah the, the induction ceremony was uh, was Saturday. It was at Brett Favre and Tony Dungy and, uh, and all those guys. The induction ceremony there that was that was all fine. And everybody's you know all hyped up and ready to see just a little bit of hit, just a little bit of something on Sunday afternoon. And then the news breaks. <laughs> there will not be a game. Now I'll be honest. I wasn't anywhere near TV getting ready to watch the game by no means, but. You know, I would have probably just tuned in, of course, later on, Sports Center caught a highlight or two or whatever, Green Bay, Indianapolis. And then I see on Twitter, or I hear, I think I saw it on the phone or something, whatever, whatever I saw it, the game was canceled, postponed due to, what was it, uh, paint? Bad paint on the field? Something on the field. Yeah. It rained. Something caused it to be bad. Yeah. Like, I don't know. Paint. That's what it was. It was paint. And so then, you know, of of paint? officials on both sides. Well, it was a safety issue. I Safety as in you're going to be slipping in the paint. You're yeah. scared. Yeah, you don't want to get hurt. Yeah, slip in the paint. Yeah. Next thing you know, you tear your ACL. Okay. You know. Okay. You know, preseason games are under the microscope as it is because they feel, football players feel they don't need them. And the, the NFL just wants them to make more money, et cetera, et cetera. Right. Nobody wants to get hurt in the Hall of Fame game. The last time I saw a guy almost get taken out in the Hall of Fame game was with Sean Taylor, the late Sean Taylor from the University of Miami playing for the Redskins almost killed somebody. With, with that legendary hit in the Hall of Fame was game. That the Hall of Fame game? Was that it was his fault. That was Not, Pro Bowl. It was in the Hall of Fame game, too, that he let he let, so he let somebody have it in that game. And he scored an interception for a touchdown. I don't believe Judge Fox. Hit us up on Twitter at the Sports Bros. <laughs> I think it was the Pro Bowl. He thinks it was a Hall of Fame game. Or it could have been both. Nah, he had a big game that game. I remember it was his first game ever. 
and he lifts somebody up, and he also scored a touchdown. Man, I think you are horribly mixing two things up. A great oh, first you game know what? ever in a Hall of Fame in game. In the Hall of Fame game. That's how, yeah. Jeff, you remember Sean Taylor or anybody having a great Hall of Fame Sean first game of the look season? Look it up. Game? Look, Hall of Fame game. First game ever. Preseason game. That sound. That doesn't sound natural. That's that's just how. Who would remember that? Who would go out and have a great Hall of Fame game? Jeff Fox would remember that. And then it, the then great sports mind that I am. Out, out, yeah. out of all people, you say it's Sean Taylor? Sean Taylor. That don't even sound like Sean that. Taylor scored an interception return for a touchdown. Was, yeah, he, he scored a touchdown. Somebody in the first game. Listen. And the Hall of Fame game was in Hawaii, right? No. No. <laughs> I tried to catch him. He was trying to catch him. But yeah, it was. It was sunny and it was bright. Yeah, that's the call for Pro Bowl. Don't you remember him lighting up that kicker in the Pro Bowl? I remember that. Right, right, right. Okay. It was a kicker? Yeah, it was a kicker. The kicker uh, was, yeah, yeah, it was, it was the kicker. The kicker was trying to tackle somebody who, you know, the, the punt returner. And Was this kicker? Does that make sense? Now you got me all mixed up. Anyway. Yeah, I was going to say, you guys stopped making sense like three minutes ago. So Commercial I break? <laughs> it's okay. Did anybody see the, the video of the cat that attacked the baby? <gasps> a cat He's laughing at a cat attacking a baby. I mean, it wasn't. It, it, the baby's fine. The baby's alive. But what it, what, what, what it was, I'll show you the video. Yeah, I'm sure you've seen You haven't seen this? No. Oh my God, this is great. <laughs> this cat, This it was one of those television shows. And they had, you know, uh, what's the famous guy who used to always be on with Jim, Johnny Carson? And he does it. Ed uh, McMahon? Not the, 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 the animal guy, the pet guy. There's the, an animal guy? The, well, you guys don't remember. Anyway. Basically, the show was a, uh, they brought an animal to the show right. you know, to show it off or whatever. The trainer's right there and another trainer. And for some reason, there was a, a, a woman and her child there on the show, on the, on the set. And I believe they were talking about it was a lion. It was a small lion. Uh, not too small, but relatively small lion cub. And the baby who was sitting on the lady's lap was crying a little bit, kind of agitated, scared, probably. Yeah, like a, maybe a two year old baby girl. And um, and the lion was looking at the baby, and uh, I know this is not a visual medium, but I want you to hear this, and then you can go on Facebook and we'll tweet it out too. And this is what it sounded like as the baby was sitting there, and, and then the lion decided to grab at the baby and listen to the trainer trying to hold things together as the lion is saying, "Yo, I want to eat this baby," and then they had to separate. Go ahead. They pulled the cat away. This is embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, power tomorrow, of course. Uh, some NBA uh, basketball. Well, not NBA, but uh, more Olympic basketball. And track and field has started. Oh, yeah. That's what I was waiting on. That's what I'm waiting on. Why? Well, first of all, I'm a former track star. <laughs> 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 so, that's my sport. I'm not laughing at you. Laughing. No, I just, I really like track because there's no excuses. There's no teammates on that show in a relay. It's you. I don't have to say, well, my point guard is terrible. Right, no, right. It's you. Right. You get out there. Unless they drop the baton. Unless they drop the baton. That's about it. So unless it's relay time, the jumps is all you. Your yeah. sprinting is all you. Any thoughts on Justin Gatlin running track now that he's, didn't he get fined, uh, caught cheating a little bit? It's a little doping scandal or yeah, something like that? Yeah. He's, he's there. He's able yeah, to. Yeah, he's there. Ain't yeah. no problem. I ain't got no problem with it. All right, so next week we will uh, be back here at 3 o'clock right here on 305 Sports Talk on 880 The Biz for Gigi Fontaine, Jeff Fox, Cat, and the whole crew. Road to Fame. Take, take us out on uh, RoadToFameTV.com as well. Uh, catch us on Twitter at The Sports Bros. We'll talk to you guys next week. What's up, everybody? It's the Freeman and Fox Show with Gigi Fontaine. Catch us on RoadToFameTV.com.